modern feature-packed soundbar with high-quality audio, virtual Dolby Atmos support that doesn't cost a fortune. <laughs> Today, we'll be speaking about GBL Bar 5.0 Multibeam, stylish all-in-one soundbar with enough bass and no subwoofer. In this video, we will be going through detailed overview, setup process, sound tests and my personal experience with this soundbar. Before we start, I would like to note that uh, GBL is not sponsoring this video. I bought this soundbar with my own money and all the thoughts mentioned in this video are only my own. Let's begin with design and build quality. In terms of design, it's a classic soundbar, no fancy details, which is great as it does not draw any attention away from the screen. There is a grill on the front and physical control buttons on the top along with two more perforated grills. On the back there is a niche with all the ports, power connector, Ethernet, optical input, two HDMI's, one with ERC support and USB-A port. This port will allow to connect flash drives to play from, only for US version of this soundbar. Oh, and there is one more thing underneath the grill on the right side. Small display that shows you things like volume level and source. Display turns on to show info and then shuts off completely, which is good because it's not shining at your face with bright LEDs all the time. Dimensions and weight of the soundbar are on your screen right now. Personally, I can say that it's not too big and would fit onto most of TV stands, even if your TV has larger legs that occupy a lot of space. By the way, if you do have your TV wall mounted, you can wall mount this soundbar as well using the kit that comes with the soundbar. Speaking about what comes in the box, besides the wall mounting kit and the soundbar itself, you get power cord, remote and two batteries for it, some documentation, and HDMI cable, which is nice to have. Plastic remote is ok, doesn't feel cheap, doesn't feel premium, but I have to note that this plastic material gets scratches pretty easily. Remote is IR, not Bluetooth, so you will have to point it directly at the soundbar. There are buttons to turn soundbar on and off, TV, Bluetooth and HDMI input switches, Dolby Atmos button, volume controls and mute. One important thing to point out here is that uh, there is no option to buy an additional subwoofer or surrounding speakers to pair with this soundbar in future. So in case you want to start with just a soundbar and then upgrade it uh, into high-end home theater system, GBL Bar 5.0 is not a model for you. Anyway, this GBL is pretty great by itself. In terms of connectivity, the best way to connect GBL bar is to use HDMI eARC if your TV supports that. This way you will get the best sound quality out of the GBL thanks to uncompressed data, which is really important if you want to go for Dolby Atmos content. It's an HDMI with 4K 60Hz video support, which is a must for something like PlayStation 5. If there is no eARC support in your TV, chances are it will support ordinary ARC, which is not that good in terms of audio data bandwidth, but still much better than optical connection that is your last option for wired connectivity. And you will need to provide your own optical cable if you want to go for that, as it's not included. Soundbar supports Bluetooth 4.2 and only SBC codec is available, which means that you will generally get worse audio using Bluetooth. Well, that's exactly how I have my TV box connected to the GBL bar most of the time, and I can't say that the drop in quality is that significant to make Bluetooth a no-go. You will be able to hear the difference for yourselves later in this video. Soundbar has Google Chromecast, Apple AirPlay and even Alexa support. Alexa does not work in my region, but both Chromecast and AirPlay work great. By the way, it's possible to create a multi-room setup using GBL Bar with the help of Chromecast or Alexa. GBL Bar has both 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi connectivity. Wi-Fi is set uh, when connecting via Chromecast or AirPlay. If you're a Spotify user like me, you will be happy to know that GBL Bar supports uh, Spotify Connect that is available right after you have your Wi-Fi setup. 
when soundbar is in a standby mode, as soon as you start streaming using Chromecast, Airplay or Spotify Connect, it turns on automatically. Which is sadly not the case with Bluetooth. It tries to turn on, but uh, sometimes it doesn't hook up to the Bluetooth device correctly. In this case, you will have to turn on the GPL bar manually so that it powers on and hooks up to the last device it was connected to. So you have your GPL bar standing or mounted and connected wirelessly or wired. Now there are a couple of things to set. GPL has added the tiny microphone to the soundbar that is used to optimize how the sound should be distributed throughout the room. To calibrate the soundbar using GBL's multi-beam technology, just hold the HDMI button on the remote for 5 seconds, and it will start to auto-calibrate with a few soundbursts. Believe it or not, this actually works. As far as I can tell, this procedure substantially enhanced the sense of uh, surrounding sound in my room. Next, you can adjust the bass level. Hold the TV button for 5 seconds, then hit the volume down button. Now you can choose from 5 levels of bass response. At first I set this parameter to 5, which is maximum, thinking that this soundbar won't be able to output enough bass anyway. I was pleasantly surprised and lowered this to level 3, which is in my opinion the best option for optimal TV experience with enough bass and clear dialogues. If you need to adjust delay, this can be done by holding TV button and then pressing volume up. Personally, I had zero issues with delay when using soundbar both wirelessly and wired. According to GBL, this bar has 5 drivers in total and each is capable of producing 50 watts of power and that means a total of 250 watts of power. Three speakers are located at the front, so we have center left, center right and center channels. And two more are on both sides. There are also four passive radiators, two on the top and two on the bottom, which are delivering the low end frequency range, allowing to get decent bass out of the soundbar. If Dolby Atmos is a key feature you are focusing on, you will need to know two things about GBL bar 5.0. First, Atmos won't work on any wireless connection, even Wi-Fi. Second, there is no Dolby Atmos here. Hey, but isn't the Dolby Atmos logo like everywhere? Well, that's a bit of marketing. Thing is, if you need true Dolby Atmos support, you would need upward firing drivers. And there are no such drivers in GBL bar 5.0. So this soundbar supports virtual Dolby Atmos by converting the full Dolby Atmos signal into what it can play. As it uses complex algorithms to bounce sounds off surfaces, you do get a really great 3D sound experience, which sounds fantastic, but once again, this is not true Dolby Atmos. I will be using iPhone 13 Pro, as it has good microphones built in. iPhone will be placed right where I am sitting on a couch when watching movies. As a source, I will be using M1 MacBook Air connected to soundbar via HDMI cable using Ugreen Type-C hub. All tests are done in around 30 square meters room with no sound treatment. Let's start with Tune Trailer to see the difference in bass levels. Let's test bass again using a bass uh, boosted song from No Copyright Sound. To my mind, that's more than enough for medium and small size rooms. Now let's test virtual Dolby Atmos. 
For this test, I'll fix the microphone to Rode VideoMicro, a cardioid microphone that picks up sounds with high gain from the front and sides, but poorly from the rear. Hopefully, this will let you hear more difference between Dolby Atmos turned off and on. For this test, I have downloaded the Dolby Atmos trailer, a link will be in the description, and I really hope that YouTube won't ban that. So, GBL bar will uh, generally try to reflect the sounds of the surfaces in this room to simulate uh, the Dolby Atmos. So, by placing the cardioid mic like this, we capture the sound that comes straight from the GBL onto the mic with more loudness than the sounds that are reflecting from the walls and coming from the sides or from the back. So when we have our virtual Dolby Atmos off, basically most of the recording will be at the higher volume. And uh, when we will turn our Dolby Atmos, virtual Dolby Atmos on, some of the parts of the audio will get more quiet. Those parts that are being reflected by the GPL onto the walls to simulate that sound from the sides or from the back. And that's why it's so important to complete the calibration before we do that, so uh, GBL understands which sound it should reflect and how. Here's how it sounds with Dolby Atmos off. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. And hear how it sounds with Dolby Atmos turned on. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Virtual Dolby Atmos doesn't bring a lot, but it definitely adds up to the sensation of that true surrounding sound. Now let's test uh, the same high-resolution audio using different connection methods. And finally, here is a comparison between GBL Bar and Epson projector in built speakers, which I was using for movies previously, and this will give you a better understanding why I am that happy with GBL Bar. To sum up, GBL Bar 5.0 is a great piece of hardware if you want to get a modern soundbar with a stylish design and enough bass and don't want to place a big external subwoofer next to it. Of course, you can't beat physics. And standalone 5.1 or 7.1 audio systems will generally sound better, but at this price point and uh, this form factor, GBL Bar 5.0 is a great choice. Thanks for watching this video up until its end. If you got some value, hit that like button and consider subscribing to this channel. And see you in the next videos.